Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic is trainer education, and we're going to be discussing session structures, pros and cons. So what this is in regards to is how should a trainer, um, not necessarily like how they should do it, but giving them the options of what are the most common ways to set up personal training uh, sessions. So if you are not a personal trainer, you can still listen to this and see what some of the pros and cons of different offerings are. So for a, for example, like a 60-minute like one-on-one personal training session versus a 30-minute one-on-one personal training session. So obviously the 30 minutes should be cheaper because you're getting less time uh, involved, but are you getting equal benefit? So if you're the one purchasing it, it's kind of nice to know what the pros and cons are. If you're a trainer and you want to kind of analyze what are going to be the best ones for you to offer clients, then it's obviously good to know what the pros and cons are. So let's go ahead and first look at the 60-minute one-on-one type personal training sessions. So for each of these things, I tried to list three positives and three cons, like three pros, three cons. And then I'll kind of just give examples and stories along the way. Um, so really quick, if you haven't listened to a past podcast about um, my history with this, is I've been personal training for 17 years. Uh, I've helped uh, consult at multiple gyms about what they should do for personal training, whether it's an individual owner or like a corporate gym where you have a personal training director over uh, seeing over multiple personal trainers. So I've worked in a bunch of different types of facilities myself and then give consultations to multiple different types of facilities. So public, private, large, small, all that stuff. So I actually helped our local university uh, start and develop their personal training um, uh, offering so they have students in exercise science and whatnot to uh, want to learn how to do personal training so they started offering that to students and faculty so I was actually part of creating that program so it's been fun to kind of get to see all aspects like to see the trainer's point of view to see the business owner's point of view um, to see the even the client's point of view so um, that is my background so when I talk about all of this stuff, it is with personal knowledge, not only just kind of reading out of a book or whatever I've read in an article. So 60-minute uh, one-on-one personal training sessions. The benefits of that is the individualized attention. So you truly can just focus in on one person, and that is your sole focus, just that. And it's very nice because you're not having to have your attention divided over multiple people. So you get more like personal connection. You can have more time to address all of their needs. So that's going to be the biggest benefits to one-on-one, one-hour sessions is personalized attention, individualized attention, full time for all of their needs, and extra time for personal details and personal connection. So this is actually how I structure my personal training offerings, uh, the bulk of them right now. And I'm lucky that I got to develop the gym uh, the way I wanted it to be. So I got to choose how I wanted to do my sessions. And the one-on-one sessions fits my personality the best. I like the idea of not only helping as many people as I can, but helping them in a deep and meaningful way. So I like the idea of personal connection, even though people annoy the hell out of me every now and then, but I'm sure I annoy the hell out of them too. (laughs) It still feels very rewarding to me to get to know more about the person. So you know a little bit about their family, a little bit about their background, why they're training, like what are their goals, what are they doing this for? That motivates me to continue to better my best so that way I can help them reach their goals. Rather than having somebody come in and being like, I just want to lose 30 pounds, and we say, okay, I like to know why. Why do you want to lose those 30 pounds? What do those 30 pounds represent to you? What do they mean to you? And when you get to know those personal details and personal connections, as I said, it allows me to feel more rewarding, uh, rewardedness, whatever the hell the word for that would be, uh, in my job. It motivates me more to continue to work harder and spend more time and improve upon my skill set. And then I uh, get a greater sense of purpose, meaning that what I feel like my purpose is in life is better fulfilled when I know the significance of the impact I'm having. 
So those are all probably like very selfish reasons as a trainer, but that's just the realness. That's the truth of it. So I like knowing why this person wants to make that change and it motiv motivates me to do that best job for them. Then, as we said, one of the benefits is full time for all leads is when you have shorter sessions, you have to kind of pick and choose what you can address. And often what somebody tells you is what they need to address. There's more to it. So they'll come in saying, like, I need to lose 30 pounds, but you find out, oh, man, they have really, really weak joints. So I need to improve their ankle, knee, and hip uh, stability. I need to improve their overall strength, and that will actually help me get more muscular damage, and then that will help me lose fat on that person faster. So they may have came in to lose fat, but I actually have to strengthen joints, I have to strengthen their whole body, and then we can actually get into losing fat. So there's often a lot of layers of things that need addressed beyond just like what the surface issues are. So having a full 60 minutes allows you to address more of those layers. And then, as we said, uh, it's just that individualized attention. So the program you do with them can be ultra personalized to just them. One of the favorite things I have about my job is even back when I was training uh, 10 to 12 hours a day, I never had the exact same experience repeated. So every single client had a slightly different workout compared to the other ones. So even if I was repeating dumbbell chest press, there might have been a time under tension range that was better for one client than the other. Maybe this client needed more technical work. Maybe this client didn't. We needed to kind of work on mental mindset and build their confidence towards pressing. So it was always slightly different, which allowed me to enjoy my job more. So if I was going to do it for 50, 60 hours a week um, in a one-on-one -on -one personal training, it was nice to know the um, nice to have that variety amongst the individualization of it. The cons, the negatives to 60 minutes one-on-one -on -one sessions is the cost. So it is a higher cost for the individual because the cost can't be diverted amongst, like they're divided amongst other people because it's just one-on-one -on -one, and it's the full cost of the whole hour. Whereas like 30 minute sessions, you can, you know, you maybe have two people to fill up an hour's worth of earnings. So each person gets kind of like half the responsibility. So if you're doing a full hour one-on-one, -on -one, that person has to be able to afford what you feel is what you need to earn per hour. Then you also have negativities related to personality conflict effects on burnout. And this is just a real thing to talk about that maybe people, um, I don't know what people's interpretations of this is going to be, but you don't get along with everybody in life. So sometimes you uh, your personalities don't mesh and it can be a little bit grinding on each individual. So they need your knowledge, you need their money, and uh, sorry to be so crass about that, but it's kind of like that's what the transition is going on, is they're paying you for knowledge, you're accepting the money to give your knowledge. And both people are benefiting in that way, but you're not getting along really well. Like the personalities are just kind of like, ugh. And it doesn't mean you necessarily like the person's a bad person, or you're a bad person, it's just different difference. So one of the things that drives me nuts and grinds on my gears, as they would say, is um, if somebody really lacks self-confidence and I have to constantly pep them up all the time, it drains the hell out of me. It annoys me. It's like, man, come on. What's wrong with you? Like, you can do this. Just freaking believe in yourself for five seconds, <laughs> you know? So um, that'll get on me a little bit. And it's because when I was younger, I didn't have a lot of confidence. So I had to teach myself confidence and it's kind of like um, I, I am absolutely am going to butcher whatever the quote of this that I'm referencing would be. So I'm going to skip past the quote. But often the things we, the traits we don't like in other people, they can be related to the traits that we've had to correct in ourselves. It's not always, but it is a, a factor of if I don't like somebody being um, lacking confidence, it's probably because I don't want to lack confidence in my life. If I don't like somebody being messy, it's probably because I don't want to be messy. So they're either related to things that we had to overcome ourselves or that we're trying to prevent in our own life. So then we kind of get angry towards the other person that they're allowing that to be part of their life. So when you do have personality conflict, either as the client yourself and you don't like your trainer or the trainer and the client don't get along that way, uh, it can grind on each other. And you can and create burnout. So if I'm training 10 hours a day 
and I don't like six of those hours, I'm not going to like personal training. <laughs> so it's going to kind of wear you out. And I've seen that happen a lot of times to a lot of trainers that they have a high turnover rate of clients because they just don't get along well and things grind out they get burned out and then they no longer care very much. They're not putting in their best effort and things kind of like uh, fizzle out. The other last con, the last negative is there's a potential limit to the number of clients that you can have. So if I'm, if I need six hours a day and I do one hour sessions, I'm only going to have six clients that can limit your word of mouth growth and it increases your financial dependency per client. So if one client cancels, you lost one sixth of your money that day. So the more one on one sessions you do, the more financial dependency you have per client. And that could be an issue, especially whenever personal training is your sole income. If you have a lot of fluctuation like that, that's kind of sketchy. It's kind of scary. You know, you have to have some kind of stability. So sometimes one on one, one hour sessions creates greater instability in earnings. Now, the down, like the drop down from that would be 30 minute one on one sessions. So it's a lower cost than compared to the 60 minutes, like one on one sessions, but it's still a high cost compared to our other options of like partner sessions or groups sessions. So it is a lower cost. So that's a pro. You still have individualized attention, but there's less personal connection time. And sometimes the reason why I'm listing that as a positive is sometimes it is a positive. So if you get worn out by people bitching and whining all day about their problems, then 30 minute sessions helps you reduce that. <laughs> so they don't, there's not as much time to talk. So you're like, hey, you know, we only got 30 minutes. We got to do this, 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 boom, 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 boom. Kind of moves faster. There's not so much talking time. So if you are somebody who doesn't really want that deep of personal connection, then 30 minute sessions helps you lessen that. And then also less time commitment per client. So it again gives you potential for more overall clients. So which is a good thing if you're not limited in the number of clients you can get. So in terms of like client potential. So if you work at a gym that has, you know, say, you know, 10,000 members, geez, a whiz, you should be plenty of clients out the wazoo potential. So allowing 30 minute sessions. And again, if you're only going to work six hours a day, that allows you to have 12 people now growing your word of mouth. And now your financial dependency is divided by 12, not six. So if someone cancels, you're only missing one twelfth of your money, not one sixth of your money. So that helps. The cons to it are sometimes that limited personal connection whenever you are somebody who likes personal connection. So for me, I didn't like 30 minute sessions when I have to used to, do, used to have to do them because it wasn't like the person came in, I, I had to have everything already ready. I didn't really get to ask them any questions. We just kind of like jumped through the, like the stuff and then they were right out the door and I'm like, well, like on to the next, you know? And it was almost like a, like a factory, like, so like bing, 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 just turning people out. And that isn't what I got into this for. So that was something I didn't like, so which is why I have it listed as a con. Uh, also, less time to address all needs. You can't meet all of their needs in 30 minutes as well as if you had 60 minutes. That's fact. You can argue that however you want. That's just fact. So can you still meet enough of their needs so they can make great progress? Oh, hell yes. But can you add in all the little extra details, get all that personal connection and stuff? No. And then the other negative of 30-minute sessions is it can be sometimes potentially overwhelming on a trainer. So if you're trying to meet like a, a typical eight-hour workday, and let's say you take an hour for lunch, so you have seven hours of work you got to fill, that's 14 clients you got to meet that day. That's 14 people's problems. That's 14 programs. That's 14 nutrition things. That's 14 sets of questions. So it can definitely, definitely, definitely feel overwhelming compared to one-on-one -on -one sessions, which allows you to deal with less people. Okay. The next kind of step we have uh, would be partner sessions at 30 and 60 minutes. So instead of training one-on-one, -on -one, you're now training two-on-one. -on -one. So you have two clients for the one session. It's an even lower cost per individual. So that's nice compared to the previous options. And it's still somewhat personalized attention. So I actually still do these now, uh, these kind of partner sessions, and especially for like husbands and wives or like sisters or brothers or people who are like good friends. Um, what's nice about it is, is typically they're coming knowing that they're going to have to share your attention. So you can pinpoint a couple of the weaknesses of the one person and then pinpoint a couple of the weaknesses of the other. And so you can kind of get a little bit of personal touch on each person. That's totally fine. So that's still a positive of it. So they're getting less cost 
but they're also still getting some personalized attention as compared to, say, group training. And then it also, one of the benefits, it tends to feel more active and fast, so your day seems to go by a little bit quicker uh, if you train in these type of sessions. It's kind of high energy, which can also make it highly exhausting, but it does give more uh, kind of excitement to the day in a little bit more of like a faster pace, but not in like a factory turnout way. It just kind of feels like boom, boom, boom. I'm doing this for that person, doing this for that person. The next two come in. Okay, I had this exercise for that person. So it kind of like it funnels your day through a little bit quicker. The cons to having uh, partner sessions is it can be overwhelming with two people, especially if they don't have um, etiquette of how training should go, where you have one of the two just talks the whole damn time and asks a bunch of weird, long-winded questions. And that can really shut you down and make it feel overwhelming trying to address the needs of the training session along with all their questions and the person just talking and telling stories and stuff. Also, there's limited availability in equipment sometimes. So that can be difficult. You're training two people and maybe you wanted to have the leg press, but the leg press is busy. Or say you're trying to do a superset and you're trying to do the leg press plus another machine. That's probably not going to happen in a big, big commercial gym. So you have to learn how to do partner sessions where maybe you take one piece of equipment, but the other person's exercise is a bodyweight exercise. So maybe you're doing single leg leg presses while the other person is doing uh, reverse lunges. So reverse lunges don't take any weight. I mean, they don't take any equipment, but they help complement the movement of a single leg leg press. So you have to learn how to train people with that format, and that can sometimes be overwhelming. Then you also have a hassle with collecting money. This has been a big thing, especially when they're not spouses. So if they're sisters or friends or brothers or something like that, and one person doesn't come, you still need to get paid. So what I've done in the past is I've, I've, had, I've told them, I said, make one of you responsible for the money. I am not collecting the money from each of you. You are going to collect it from each other and then hand it to me as a one unit. So that way I don't have to deal with if somebody doesn't come, you know, hey, you haven't been at five of the last six sessions. I still feel like you should pay. Well, I haven't been at five of them. I'm not paying if I'm da 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 da. I don't want to deal with any of that shit. So that's their problem. <laughs> so put that back on them. And then um, it is incredibly different, uh, difficult to train partner sessions if they have different goals. So if you have one person trying to learn how to be a power lifter and the other person just wants to lose body fat, that can be difficult to try to make that work. You know, if you have one person that wants to bulk up and be a bodybuilder, but the other person wants to learn how to do fun endurance like CrossFit circuits, well, that's not going to work very well either. So you have to have people of similar goals to make that work. So it would be a negative to try to do partner training if people don't have similar goals. The next thing we have is group sessions. So this would be people of three or more. And again, you have 30-minute or 60-minute options. The benefit of this, again, is it's an even lower, previous, uh, lower cost than previous options. So every single option I'm going through, I'm actually layered them and listed them in the order of what you would be highest cost to lowest cost per individual. So group sessions... Now, what you need to earn per unit of time. So what you need to earn as a trainer per 30 minutes or per 60 minutes is now divided by more and more people. So it's a lower cost per individual. That also makes your financial income less dependent on each individual. So now, if you're training, say, you know, 30 people in a day because of the way the structures of the classes and groups are, now if one person misses, it only affects your money one thirtieth. <laughs> so if that makes sense. Or if one person quits, something like that. So there are also, one of the pro benefits of group sessions is there's lower expectations of individualized and detailed knowledge of the trainer. Now people, trainers who do group sessions might feel that this is um, uh kind of like an insult, and I don't mean it that way. It's just you don't have to have as specific of knowledge. So you don't have to know five different ways to squat around different body types and injuries whenever you're teaching a group because you're teaching a group and you're just going to say, hey, this is what we squat. If you feel like you need to move your foot in or out, go ahead and do so. If you feel like you need to you know, do this and this, go ahead and do so. So you kind of leave it up to personal choices, whereas you having to specifically know how to move that person correctly for their exact body type. So there's less individualized knowledge expectation and less detailed knowledge expectation. So there are different difficulties of knowledge, absolutely, when training a group. 
session. You have to be more like positive motivator. You have to learn how to give like very quick, simple corrections if you see somebody about to hurt themselves. So you can't get into super details. So, but how do you get your message across very quickly and efficiently? So you also have to have a, a different type of exercise knowledge is what are good group-based exercises versus individual exercises. So there are challenges to the knowledge of training groups, but there's also kind of ease to the knowledge of training groups. We'll leave it there. <laughs> so hopefully I didn't overly insult anybody. Uh, then the negatives, the cons to group training is it's, it's potentially overwhelming. Sometimes it just doesn't match people's personal uh, person, personalities. So you might be more of a kind of calm, slow, steady, even kill type person, but that does not work when training groups. So I have trained groups myself, and I've done it for like years at a time, and you have to be the super peppy, like Richard Simmons type of person. You can't be negative. You can't be kind of like Eeyore. You can't be monotone. You have to be jacked up, okay? You have to be almost a little bit of like a cartoon version of yourself, because that energy needs to spread across the room. So you do need to be energetic. So if that does not fit your personality, that's going to be overwhelming. Then there's the negatives or cons to it is uh, a totally different skill set of knowledge of like what type of equipment you would need and to have available and what type of equipment is best to use. So if you're training a group of six people and you want to use the leg press, it's kind of stupid. Or you better have that involved in some kind of circuit. Because there's no way you're going to have each person do the leg press and take like 10 minute breaks in between their, their turns on the leg press. So you have to learn how to group the training up and circuit it. You have to kind of, and then is the leg press even going to be available for a group circuit? So you have to see if the gym you're in actually uh, fits the format that you'll need for group training. That's a big deal. Okay. And then one of the negatives of it is you can't possibly address individual needs. There's no way. So if I'm teaching a group of 15 people and somebody says like, you know, oh, like how would I squat for this, this, or this? And it's like, hey, I got 14 other people that are standing here. I got to pay attention to them too. So it's really hard to um, address individual needs. And if you see someone moving incorrectly, but they're still safe, you kind of have to let that slide sometimes. You're like, I can't take the time to go correct this person because I got all these other uh, things that I have to have on my mind and all these other people I got to keep up with. So there's less individual um, needs being met. However, there is potential for one-on-one -on -one sessions out of that. So you can train group sessions and then somebody tell, comes and talks to you and they say, you know, like, like say, for example, you come over and you're like, hey, I saw you doing the squats and, man, you really need to work on your hips. Like, we need to get your hips more open up and strong, get your range of motion, but strengthen that new range of motion. Would you be interested in some one-on-one -on -one sessions to try to work on your hips? And they might go, yeah, every time I squat, like, my right hip really bugs me. Do you think we can fix that? And be like, yeah, we can definitely fix that. And then it leads into a one-on-one -on -one session. So that is a kind of a, a positive within the negative. And then the last one we have is seminars or, like, classes, like one-off classes. So you have, like, a booty builder class, something like that, or, like, a nutrition seminar. So just kind of like a one-off event. That is... Again, is a lower cost for high, uh, for individual, but you still get the kind of a higher profit. Actually, you'll usually make more money per hour out of uh, seminars and classes than you do out of training sessions. And you get to choose what you want to teach, so that's helpful as well. And it can lead to future uh, sessions and sales. So if somebody comes and they kind of come to a nutrition class and they say, "Hey, I love what you taught. It really made a lot of sense, but I'm having trouble kind of putting that together. Would you mind writing a nutrition plan for me?" And then that can lead to an individual sale. So those are the positives for that. The cons for seminars or one-off classes is it's hard to meet everybody's expectations. So everybody comes thinking that you're going to tell them the secret that's holding them back. And good freaking luck, okay? So it's hard to meet everybody's expectations, and it's hard to address individual needs. So I've, had, I've done group classes where we'll teach, like, um, nutrition, for example. And you have somebody that says, like, well, I work out in the morning. Somebody says, I work out in the evening. And so you teach them about meal timing. Okay, well, before you work out, make sure you have foods. It's commonly best to have carbohydrates. That way the foods digest best, you know, so that way you have more energy while you're actually working out. And then somebody says, well, I don't like bread. Okay, that, well, don't have bread. <laughs> so you start getting a lot of, like, weird individual questions. And it's like, I've had to tell people before, I'm like, hey, why don't you just 
like, why don't we talk about this after the class? So, um, and you'll have people ask, like, just stupid things in group settings. It's amazing. Um, then uh, you also, one of the negatives is you need to be comfortable talking in front of large groups. So talking one-on-one -on -one is significantly different than talking in large groups. One of my techniques is I kind of, like, start, I, I love Q&A sessions. It's so much easier because it's almost like you're talking one-on-one -on -one and the rest of the group is listening in. So that's a secret. So anytime I go do group classes, um, I'll have like a topic or uh, an outline in my mind. But sometimes I come in and I just say, hey, we're going to talk about nutrition today. And here's a handout of things that we're going to eventually cover. But I actually want to start with what are your questions? Do you have anything that you came today and you are determined to know before you leave? And you usually get one kind of outgoing person. Uh, who might also be the pain in the ass of the class, by the way, who just kind of blurts out their question right away and gets the ball rolling. So that's fun, and that's helpful. But then they're also the person that sometimes is overwhelming. They keep asking questions or they argue with you, <laughs> and it's amazing. So um, like I remember one class I had this lady. Uh, I was telling uh, about, like, meat as a protein source. And they told me, I read this one book, like, this is their quote. So they said, well, I read such and such book, and it said that meat actually uh, rots in your gut, and it can cause, um, like, toxic issues. And I don't, like, I actually read the book that they said, uh, but I, I don't know how in the world people think meat is going to rot in your gut. Like, it digests in your gut, but, like, Chicken breast digest in like four or five hours. Chicken breast doesn't rot in four or five hours. So it's amazing to think what some people think of. But you will have people in group sessions where they read an article or they read a book and now they question you on everything that you know, even though you might have a master's in nutrition and you've been doing this for 10 plus years. <laughs> so I actually enjoy those moments now because it's almost like a, um, a test of what you do or don't know and how confident you are. So, I uh, used to, when I was younger, I'd get mad at those people, like, silently in my head and be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, da 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 da, da. But now I'm like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> I kind of get, like, excited. And I'm like, I wonder if I can, you know, answer whatever their question is. So, have I read that book? Have I read that article? Have I watched that video? You know, am I familiar with the term? So, you'll have people do that all the time at group sessions. They'll throw out some fancy term as if they know it, like, like off the top. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, this is how I talk all day. And I'm like, bullshit, you had to Google that. <laughs> I know you had to Google that because I have a master's in nutrition and I had to Google that. So it's a ton of fun. Um, I just, I probably did not make that sound very fun, <laughs> but uh, group train, uh, like class uh, seminars and stuff are, they're enjoyable. So if you've never done them, uh, you might want to get your feet wet and try that every now and then. So it, like I said, it's a cool way to make more profit per hour. So that's one of the big benefits of it. And it's a great way to get people into your facility or get knowing your name. And it can lead to kind of future sales and sessions and stuff like that. So it's a great growth thing. So if you run a gym, a private gym or public uh, public gym, and you're in charge of like what you can do at the place. Um, doing like once every eight week kind of like large seminars is a super helpful way for sales. Um, so it's definitely a good option. So the last thing we'll talk about here is kind of like what is best for you out of all these sessions we talked about. So we talked about 60 minute one on one, 30 minute one on one. Then we talked about partner sessions at 30 and 60 minutes, group sessions at 30 and 60 minutes, and seminars and like one off classes. What's best for you? The first thing is you got to find what matches your personality. And this doesn't mean you shouldn't challenge yourself, okay? You definitely should challenge yourself. But if you are truly just not meant to be like a super peppy, positive person, group training is just going to be a pain in the ass. It's not going to work very well for you. You'll feel demoralized by it. You'll burn out from it. And you won't love your job as much. So if you're going to challenge yourself, take all the challenges that feel exciting, okay? So pick what matches your personality. Then you have to pick what matches your equipment and your space availability. So in the gym that I own, we do not have a very good uh, space for me to have group sessions and have the open gym. So our gym is a public gym. So it's open to up to 100 members, a cap at 100. But I can't just let my members come in but then also try to host like an 18-person class. Ain't going to work. There's too much noise. Maybe they're trying to use squat racks when I'm trying to use squat racks. There's too much conflict because we only have 3,500 square feet. And if you own a gym, you'll know what that means. Um, but there's not a lot of room to be a public gym and do classes. 
and then equipment availability. You know, if you want to do a class session on squats, but you only have one rack and one barbell, good freaking luck. Ain't going to happen, okay? So you have to pick what matches your personality. You have to pick what matches your equipment in your space. And then the last thing is, is you absolutely should have multiple options and ones that you feel are complementary. So I personally do one-on-one 60-minute sessions. That's my highest kind of cost per individual thing that I offer. And then we'll do partner sessions when somebody asks me to do so. I don't advertise that too much, but I will do it when, when it's beneficial for somebody. And then I do seminars and one-off classes when it fits my schedule and convenience. And then I do like online clients. So we've talked about in a past podcast about diversifying your income. Uh, let me see if I can find that, which I don't have prepared ahead of time. There we go. Okay, so podcast number 304, Trainer Education diversifying income without spreading too thin. Meaning, how do you diversify what you can offer but not offer so much damn stuff that you don't do anything meaningful or anything of any good quality? So this is just within session options. It's good to have at least two options of sessions. And then you need to diversify your income by other ways too, like having online clients, offering like nutrition plans, eBooks, all this other stuff. So you need to have other ways of making income other than just like sessions. But within your sessions, it's good to have multiple options, okay? So that way, uh, what I would typically suggest you do is pick what you feel is your best one. And then when people come and ask for something different, offer it. So if somebody comes to you and they ask,